bum, 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 bum. Starting there. Okay, okay. Jumping over here to make sure it's showing up. There we go. Oh, do you need do you need my phone? Uh, sure. You can take your phone if you want. Uh, just check one thing. Yep. All right. We are liberty, liberty, liberty live. We're live. We are live. This is great. I'll be talking on the phone and stuff. Hi. All right. Hey guys. Hello. Let me just check something here. Oh boy. You're not that popular. Wait. Wait. Are I've you? got four hits. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so the volume's down. Um, That's nice. I don't know if you need it for anything, but... Yeah, because I'll probably share it real quick. Here, don't make me... Nice, I could have got up. You could have, you lazy bum. I know. All right, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience watching at home? Are we... Uh, we are... We are now live. We are... We are now live. Okay. Hi, I'm Keith McGuire, uh, Mark's behind the camera, and uh, today we're going to hopefully finish up my, uh, uh, what, do, what do we call this thing again? Old Stone Barn. Shed? No, Barn. Barn? Old Stone Barn. Old yeah. Stone Barn. So, uh. Not Cold Stone Barn. Cold That'd Stone be ice Barn. Cream. Mm, that mm. sounds good. Yeah, we love ice cream. All right. Um, I am going to begin today uh, by... Doing a little correction that's been kind of bothering me. I'm painting along uh, these last two, three, five times, and I noticed that the uh, this particular rock wall uh, is wrong. It needs a uh, needs a correction. The perspective is not correct. So I'm going to introduce you to uh, something that uh, a friend of mine introduced me to. And if you can kind of recognize it, it's a more or less a Mr. Clean um, uh, white scrubby pad or any variation thereof that you can buy at your local store. Shouldn't have soap and it shouldn't have a blue back on it, okay? It should just be the white um, um, scrub pad. Yeah, the Magic Eraser. Magic is the Eraser. Mr. Clean. Thank you. That's Scotch the Scotch Bright has one. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what the exact name is. And then uh, I think if you search on Amazon for melamine foam, uh, each one's a little bit different, but uh, overall it all does the same thing. So um, before this stuff came along, you more or less could not scrub. You could kind of scrub with a brush, you, you know. Now, uh, the nice thing about the Arches uh, Cold Press Watercolor Paper is that you can scrub on it and kind of clean things up. The nice thing about this stuff is it really cleans things up. Uh, however, um, you do have to wet it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going off camera. I've got a little water on it. Um, it doesn't have to be sopping wet. Uh, and I'm going to remove a little bit of this green here uh, because I want to make the wall... I want the perspective of the wall be a, a little bit... Uh, um, wider at this end than this end that's what's been screwing me up uh, looking at this thing it's like my perspective was off so here's an opportunity to show you what these what these pads can do and you know before i'd screw up i'd pretty much have to start over again but with these things watercolors now have an eraser now there are certain staining colors that uh, you know, you won't be able to get out. But, believe me, for the most part, you're going to be thrilled. So but should... it's it's not just the eraser, it's the quality paper. Yeah, yeah, if you were using, uh, yeah, if you were using, uh, you know, a paper-based watercolor paper, um, you would be, um, tearing it up like crazy. But because, uh, uh, the, the 140 cold, uh, cold press... This uh, Arches watercolor paper is made out of 100% rag cotton, and uh, it's um, 
it's extremely durable. That's why I think it's great for professionals and it's great for uh, amateurs because you can abuse the heck out of it and, uh, you know, clean it, scrape it and start again. So the one thing about this, so, so as you can see, I got most of the green out. I'm happy with that. I'm kind of looking around. Um, I'm looking, do you see the paper towels? Did, did we, I can uh, run off for a second. I'll grab it. Okay. <laughs> Do me a favor, I hold, hold that up a little bit to the, to the camera. Maybe they can see it a little better, like, and point to where the. Okay, so this area, I've scrubbed off a bunch of the color. Yeah, it was green like this, now it's. Um, and now, yeah, it was green like over here. I don't know how I'm doing, quite honestly. Yeah, I, you're pretty good. Okay, so, yeah, it was like this color. And I knocked it off so I can get the wall a little bit long, a uh, little bit wider at this end. So, anyway, I'm going to use a paper towel. Thank you. I'm here for. All right. I'm here to serve. Yep. Yes, sir. All right, get that out of the way. Can I'm I, just going to. Can I sit back down now, yes, please? Yes. Please, sir. Get me a. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Um. So I'm just taking a paper towel and kind of dabbing up the excess water. Like I said, you want to use that thing wet, okay? Um, the paper don't have to be wet, but the pad does, okay? So you want to get it wet, scrub off what you need, and then you can go ahead and uh, you have to let it dry, okay? Before you start painting on it again. Just let it dry thoroughly. Gives the paper a chance to kind of, the surface to reset itself a little bit. So in the meantime, I am going to... Uh, I was going to work on developing a little more texture on the ground, a little more uh, texture in the trees in the background, and the main tree too, okay? So I will start by adding a little bit of color to my tray, which you guys can't see. <laughs> well, actually they can see that a little bit. Really? Yeah. If I scooch it a little more? Yeah. No, All right, sure. cool. So... This is, let's see, which green is this? Um, all right. This is olive green I'm putting on my tray. I'm now going to add a little bit of May green. These are Schminke's watercolors. Um, big fan. I'm a huge fan. Uh, they are a dry, um, uh, they're a pan paint. Um, and they just really are packed with color. Uh, the trouble with the uh, tubes is the liquid that makes it liquid. Um, also, you know, you can't get as much color. These are just pure pigment. Whereas you got to have the filler that makes it liquid uh, when you're using a tube paint. So I've just absolutely fallen in love with this stuff. All right. So I mix the two colors, uh, the two greens together. And I am going to attempt to kind of break up the background a little bit so it looks like you know different trees um i might even uh sneak in maybe a pine here let's do that I'm gonna sneak in a little pine right here now this is pretty you know not real close so i don't have to uh get all too detailed or anything All right, cool. So I'm going to add a little bit of. Now, how would there be one lone pine tree well, growing back? You know there? what? I haven't grown the whole little forest yet. <laughs> Give me a sec here. Uh, I was hoping for like, well, the squirrel that came yeah. down from yeah. uh, the the Norse squirrel, right? Had that one acorn in, or one pine cone in his mouth. So, and the thing with trees, I. I tend to like not having like one individual, he, he's right, you know, having one individual pine is uh, very lonely. Two pines, or twin pines, if you're from the Detroit area, um, you don't want to do anything in uh, uh, in evens. So, so if you're going to do a, a clump of, of pines... I think it's always kind of 
you want to do them in odd numbers so threes or fives so that's what we're going to do three and these pines kind of look like they're kind of going behind the the crest of the hill there and then there's like a little a wee bit of forest or something behind it oh my god what am i channeling oh shrek yeah um oh, i thought you're doing braveheart yeah i wish my accents are usually based on cartoons. So, um. They all our Scottish viewers just turned off. Yeah, it's like, yeah, they're gone. I've lost Scotland. <laughs> um. All right. So, I'm hoping you can see that okay. Yeah, I can see trees. Good. All right. There's three of them. Three. Behind okay, the so crest. Do. Ah, excellent. Somebody's listening to me, right? I've got a handful of people watching right now. Excellent. Hello, viewers. All right, well, I'm going to kind of do the same thing back here on this side. So, I don't know if you notice how I do these little guys. I'm just kind of, I'm going to point it out. Uh, your hand's kind of in the way. Shucks. So, what I do is I usually put it like a straight line down. And then at the top, I start with very thin, kind of separated little bits of uh, cross lines across uh, they don't have to be even but as you come down then you start just creating a uh, some little lines there you go now as you get to the bottom they get fatter and thicker and then you just kind of stop there now if you'll notice notice the air that's in them you don't want it to be like a, just a solid triangle and you don't want them weird stair step thing that uh, we all do when we were children okay so you want them to kind of break apart a little bit so I got two back there also it's kind of nice you can vary the color a little bit I'm adding a little indigo uh, just to make it like a little bit darker like I said I'm trying to create and not be in my own shadow or whatever um but what i'm hoping to do is to have you know a little variation in the color so they're not exactly all the same yeah so another clump of three but what's this i'm gonna go behind the hill a little bit this little tree is gonna be a little farther back i'm gonna do that's right a clump of five okay okay what yeah nobody's <laughs> that's what i do in my class because nobody answers me mm, so sorry. trying to trying answer to get you a little bit of a closer view of what you're doing really trying what do you think i do sit back here and read a book while well, you're painting Jeez, most of the time your eyes are closed all right. Anyway, give me a second. Stop, don't paint right now. Okay, fine. There we go. All right. All right. There you go. We're good. Yeah. You gonna do another pine tree or no? Uh, I was done, but uh -huh. now. do one more and, and and explain it slowly. Okay. So in this little corner here. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, now I've got these up over the crest a little bit. I you know, um, so I'll tell you what. I am gonna make this guy bigger. Uh, so. I bring the line down okay move your hand so we can see it yeah. all right then at the top I do just a few little cross ones okay and then as I come down they start slanting because the branches get a little heavier so now the lines are starting to be um, are starting to come down a little bit and as you can see I still leave air between the branches just makes them a little more interesting See the air? Mm. And if you notice, they're not very, it's just line work. The, the, you can make them a little clumpy. That's always good. But they should be starting to come down. And then as you get to the bottom, they get heavier and heavier, and then bam. We're cool. Good. All right. So there we go. We've got some nice little pine trees going in the back. Um, we're going to put a special squirrel in here now. Um, all right. At this point, what I did want to do was add a little more now to the uh, to the tree. 
um, while I'm waiting. This is drying as we speak. Uh, so for the tree, we kind of started last week. Um, I've you know I'm putting in basically kind of clumps of color. We don't want they're clumps. What we don't want is you know we're not trying to do individual leaves. Or God, we'd be here. It'd be less than 75, I think, right? Um, but as you can see, what I do try to do is, yeah, you want little bits and pieces. You want it to break up. And you want the thing, you want the tree to have kind of like light and shadow, okay? So you want a little lighter, you know, sort of like anything. Anything that you do will have, you know, value, lights and darks. So... That's what I'm doing as I come closer to the top. I'm trying to lighten up a little bit, use a little brighter green. I'm still using the same colors. And I'm going to break this little area up too. I'm just. Uh oh. Trouble, Batman? Yeah, stop for a second. Okay. We lose our connection. Yeah, just for a second. I try to get fancy. I gotta stop. Okay. Maybe next paint series I'll have a better setup. Okay. Let me know when you're. No, ready. we're good. Keep going. Sorry. All right. It was just a momentary. I think we were rudely interrupted by uh, me. Pop oh, okay. I was gonna say uh, communists. Uh, what? Yeah, trying to look, find you know some ad space on uh, on various. Uh, never mind. I don't know how communism gets you uh you, ad revenue but you know what you are not you have not been watching the news lately that's i okay. have not I you have not because facebook's been doing a little dance of late i don't watch facebook either if i can help it yeah that's well, why we're on youtube yeah hi no. youtube <laughs> hey we're gonna be on facebook later though so eventually be nice all right anyway so i've added a few more branches uh I'm going to add a few uh, sticks and twigs while I'm at it. I'm going to use a sepia, kind of a, it's a kind of brown gray. Basically, it is brown and gray, or brown and black mixed together. Um, and they call it sepia. I don't know why. I don't know who invented it. But it's, uh, I don't like using brown brown for, um, for trees and tree branches because... It just most of, most of the time they're gray, but everybody uses brown. I hate it. It looks ugly. Now you're just being critical of trees. And everybody knows I'm always big on opinion. It's got to be. It's got to be my way. Please. All right, so see how I just threw in a few lines? I add a couple more little branches. I like when the branches kind of break off a little, break out a little into the skyline. Makes it a little more, a little more air in the tree so it isn't just a clump of tree, you know? Um, all right, getting, I kind of like that now. I might... I might add a little other, a uh, few other colors into the tree in a little bit. I gotta let things dry though. Uh, let's see, in the meantime. Uh, oh, come on, hurry up. <laughs> it's being a pain. Well, it's been pretty damp here. I think it's been pretty damp everywhere due to the last hurricane. Just went through yesterday or the day before. I guess we're getting some of the moisture now. All right, so I'm adding a a little more, a little more brighter green into my grass foreground here near the near the back of the house here. Just want to make it, I like rough and crispy kind of ground, or 
no manicured lawns for me. So as you can see, I just kind of using a dry brush and just drop a few lines in. Then I take a wet brush or a damp brush and I'll just kind of blend out the little bits and pieces I've made. And it just gives it a little, um, a little more texture to the ground. It's like I said, we don't have to have manicured lawns near our old stone barn. All right, I like that. That looks pretty good. This side I kind of did uh, last week, and I kind of like it. It's got some values. I'm going to leave that alone. Slide and the picture up. Up. There you go. Yeah, I'm still also kind of waiting on this because mm, everything else is kind of based on it. However, what I can do is I can start defining a little bit better uh, the rocks and stuff in my wall. And we can take a quick second to talk about all the materials that you use in every one of these videos. Wow. Like your Schminky brand pan paints. I thought I did. You did? Schminky well, brand. It, yep, Schminky. But but did you tell them where they can find links to purchase oh, God, the no. different things? God, no. I want a big supply for me whenever I need it, so... Oh, all right. Um, so all the materials Keith uses in the videos, the Smeaky brand pan paints, the little Cornell brushes, the Arches 140 watercolor paper, cold press watercolor paper, the enamel butcher tray. Uh, in the description of this video is a link to Keith's website where there's links to purchase all these wonderful products from various suppliers, whether it's Amazon, Michaels, Blix, Ulrich's, uh, please use the links to purchase the products and we get a small commission as a thank you. You don't pay any extra. Uh, or if you'd like, just use the, the list that we've provided as a checklist to purchase at your local art supply store. We still recommend supporting those while they're still around. Yeah. All right. Are you dry and ready to talk again now? I am. Right. I am. Um, did we mention everything? Tray, butcher tray. Yeah. That's what I'm using. I love butcher trays. Uh, there are also uh, regular pallets that you can uh, purchase. They're plastic, and they got little wells you can squeeze all your paints into. Um, the only reason I don't like them is they stain eventually, whereas a regular enamel butcher tray does not. Um, you got to wash it out every once in a while, but by golly, it's clean when you're done, you know, and it's white again. Whereas, unfortunately. The, you know, the plastic pallet trays eventually get pretty stained up. And what you're doing when you're mixing anything in your, in your tray is you want to be able to see what color um, you are actually mixing. And the problem is if you got like a pink stain underneath, that is obviously going to affect what color you think you got. So, like I said, these are nice to have. They're not that expensive. Um... The only place I can think of that's still making them, and I don't know why, is China. Um, so, Because everything's made in China. No, but I mean, these were made in China before everything was made in China, you know? So, right. I don't, yeah, I'm serious. I mean, for years and years and years, they've all come out of China. And they all have, the, they got to have the blue trim around it. And, uh, and it's just tradition. They're all stamped on the back. So Sounds that's good. Yeah, that's why we know they're from China. Oh, and real quick, if you guys are watching, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We try to put out at least one video a week. We want to get back to more and uh, share it if you get a chance because we appreciate any support. Now, let's actually paint. They're I, here to watch you paint. I don't want to paint anymore. Is that a pencil? Yeah. I just wanted to, since I did uh, scrape out a bunch of color... Um, I just want to make sure that my rock wall is going to be where, uh, you know, where it's a little bit wider now than it was down here. So I feel pretty good about that. All right. And it's almost dry. That's why I, I grabbed the pencil so that I can kind of get working on this eventually. So what I am going to do, though, because it is very close, okay, is we're going to get back to... Uh, creating... Little, and now this is where I take off my glasses. Um, 
I want to, so we kind of broke up the rock in the building. We've got a kind of a stucco finish on it, but the rock, I want it to have a little more uh, detail, a little more uh, dark in the cracks of the rock, you know, so that you can, they'll be a little more distinguishable. So what we did was a very loose, um, uh, painting of the lines or the, you know, the cracks of the rocks. And we did a loose color and not a very fine line because that'll show how the rock kind of, you know, how they kind of roll in a little bit. Um, you'll be able to see that once you put that fine line in. It'll look sort of like a rolled surface a little bit or a shadowed surface that eventually goes into the cracks. What are you babbling about? All right, let me just do a little bit. See what I mean? Now they they look kind of not so um, not such a hard line between each rock. There we go. All right, I'm going back this way. Hope you didn't all get dizzy. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. You gotta give a warning. Be like, everybody rotate your <laughs> tablet to the right. Really? Everybody rotate back to the left. <laughs> oh, great. Now I got a song in my head. <laughs> That's fine. It's taken me, what, about a week when I finally got Honeycomb's Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're not small. No, 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 no. Caught in Andrea's head. And I think that is the most perfect thing to torture her with yeah well <laughs> now we got to start a new one not until i catch her singing that she's got it yeah. so uh i teach a, a kid's drawing class no way yeah tell me more it's true so i teach a kid's drawing class and i i, I really do enjoy it um but i had a new student yesterday and uh she says, uh, do you mind if I play my Japanese uh, uh, music? And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking it's the Japanese pop, you know, that all the little teenagers that I teach, um, you know, listen to on occasion, usually around when they're 12, 13 years old. So it's like tradition. You have to listen to Japanese pop for some reason. And uh, <laughs> so she pulls out her thing and it's, it was amazing because it was that most amazing um, traditional Japanese music. You know, the, the that weird instrument they have. I don't know the name of it, but uh, but it was it was. I think my mouth must have fallen open when I uh, when she started playing. It's, I'm like, okay, I didn't quite expect that. Believe me, but uh, made for the only problem I had with it. Was I couldn't think of anything but Mr. Miyagi after that, you know? Um, so, <laughs> from the Karate Kid. It, it just, it was like every time you were in Mr. Miyagi's home, it was that kind of traditional Japanese music that was playing in the in the old movie. So, yeah, I I got that stuck in my head. So, so they were, most of yesterday I walk around going, Daniel-san. And, uh, let's see, wax on, wax off. So, I'm easily influenced by pop culture, believe me. Danielson. All right, as you can see, I'm these fine lines, I don't make them, um, what do you call it? I don't make them like solid everywhere. Do a little bit, a little heavy line here, a little thinner there. As you can see, it starts breaking up the, the rocks. And when they build these walls, they're not, you know, like the pyramids they're where they all have the same size block, you know, this by this by this. So, you know, some of them are a little bit fatter. Some rows are thinner. It's like whatever was available. Uh, 
And as you can see, it's slowly coming together as we build our build our wall. Now, one of the things I do have in this picture, I, I did wooden uh, beams across the top of the tops of the um, windows. So we'll get into that in a minute, too. <laughs> like you said, I did wooden beams inside the roof line. Like yeah. <laughs> when you guys weren't looking, I, I yeah. I painted the inside of the I building. I painted the inside of the building first and then covered it in gray and stone. These people are scary. I don't think you should watch his videos. Shut your mouth. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway. Coming together. You can kind of break up the racks a little bit so they're not... If you feel you got too big of chunks here or there, you know. You just break it down. You don't want anything too big, okay? Mm -hmm. You want them... Like somebody actually was able to pick them up and place them. So, we've almost got the side of the building done. Alright. So, I don't know if you noticed, as I got nearer to the top, uh, the rock got a little bit smaller. They tend to do that. And it's like you can see a little more of the line work. There. All right. And as you get down a little bit lower, not so much because it's a little more light. Down at the bottom. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to run. Uh, I'm going to use my um, ultramarine blue. I'm going to add a little ultramarine blue to the edge of the stucco. Try to make it kind of look like it's been, it's got some thickness to it, okay? Because it does. You don't want to go nuts or anything. You just want to give it the feeling that has a little bit of texture that's now missing. It has been broken away. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water. I'm just going to kind of rinse it back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Let's let that set up for a little bit. Oh my goodness. It's dry. All right. So and that's it for today. No, Thanks, no, everybody. No, no, oh. no, no, no. My God, I'm going to get some color on here. All right. So I am going to use a little bit of the um, olive green again. And I'm going to, I just want to kind of give myself a, a bit of groundwork here so I can see where I'm working. So I'm just throwing a little bit of a line here. I did erase some of the rock, top of the rock pile, the granite, whatever that is right here, the foreground rock. But I just want to put this in so I can kind of see did I get what I wanted. And also, um, we talked about this last time. Uh, remember to kind of get up and look at your work. Uh, it's just that's exactly what I'm going to do in a second here. So you're going to have to give me a chance to... I want to see if I got the angle. Sometimes it looks fine to me when I'm sitting right next to it. But uh, I'm going to get up, get out of the way a little bit. And... Yeah, I think that's pretty close. Pretty close. For the highway. Okay, so 
I'm gonna look, I'm gonna I'm gonna work with that. Hmm. All right. So, like we did with the uh, the 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 building, uh, the stone on the building. I'm going to grab a little bit bigger brush, and I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, indigo, a little bit of brown. And uh, an ultramarine blue to get a kind of a bluish gray. And what I'm going to attempt to do is just going to kind of wash some color across this. You can see how I leave it a little, little light, a little dark. It just gives it a little more. Um, you know, it gives the rocks a little more value, a little more life if they're not all the same gray. So you try to break it up a little bit. And I'm going to add just a touch more blue to this. And, oops, I hit the ground. That's okay. Not it's even... okay to get stones on the ground? No, I'm, no it's just going to... I'm gonna let it bleed into the ground a little bit. Oh, I was say, how many of these erasers do you think I have? Yeah. Well, we can cut it into many small <laughs> pieces, and I recommend doing that when you do get a when you do get them, just cut them up. And uh, they are extremely, extremely helpful. I can't tell you how many paintings I've <laughs> I gave up on over the years that I could have. With a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Oh, I have an idea. Yeah, you've seen me work. <laughs> What's wrong with this one? Well, this feather <laughs> got a little smudge on it, and I have to scrap the whole thing. See? Keith, <laughs> it's a 24 by 36 yeah, painting. Why are exactly. you... Yeah, exactly. But seriously, I mean, yeah. I mean, if I'd have had this when I was a kid, you know... You wouldn't be where you are today because you would have fixed all your mistakes. That's right. I would have been in Cabo San Lucas or some other cool, weird place. Painting birds, right? Birds. Birds. All right. So, got some color on that. This one's already got some light color. We will be putting rock to that, uh, to that surface. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to come down. I did kind of want to... Kind of finish up this foreground a little bit now in the foreground i previously in a previous episode uh applied a little bit of burnt sienna and some green together because i don't want like a hard trail i want kind of like beat down grass sort of like what a cow would do or something to uh to your lawn if it had a nice trail going through it so that's what I'm kind of working on here is I just want to get a little little path kind of going out with my beat down my beat down path hmm. my English is uh Definitely a second language today. Um, I can't pull out words that I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm, like, eh. I'm just glad the grass is beat down and not just dead. Exactly. Because I know how much you care for a fine lawn. Mm -hmm. I think one of your future paintings needs to be a nice suburban... Uh, <laughs> home setting <laughs> set of old barns it'll be a, a well, that'd be great a ranch white yeah. picket fence a nice ranch home. manicured yeah. lawn with the cross patterns from the lawnmower oh cross cut too mm -hmm. oh god thank you for a grassy challenge there <laughs> that would be that would be hard all right leftover christmas lights on the gutter because you don't take them down every year no you don't have to I believe that's the law, right? It's after optional. five years, you get to leave them up, right? I, yeah. I think there's a... Become security lighting after a while. Yeah. 
Who is it? <laughs> Santa. Yeah. Santa. All right, land shark. All right, so as you can see, I'm getting there. Any minute now. What, I left? Huh? Thought you were telling me I was. You're super. <laughs> of course. Um, now that I was off uh, off camera again. Well, you are. No, oh, sorry. Thank you. Better? Yeah. You know, so apparently the tape on the table doesn't help. I need to actually <laughs> build a box for you to stay inside of. I don't know if I can turn it. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to start just, yeah, pinning it down. I, I, uh. Ay, ay, ay. That would be like. I make, I'll get a smaller, there we go. I just get a smaller table, like a stool. Yeah. And then you can walk <laughs> around the stool. I'd be hunched down or, or hunched down over it. Over one. All right. One piece of it. All right. I'm getting close to what I wanted. Gosh, Keith, that so, looks a lot like what your rivers look like. That's true. I wouldn't know. I think I've only seen you do one river. One creek. Yeah. One creek. And it ran sideways. Yes. That's, that's how I like it. All right. There we go. It's kind of... Kind of... Kind of pathy. Pathos. Kind of pathos. Alright. That's a Thor character, right? Yeah. So. Beware. Pathos is revenge. So I'm just going to mention my... Uh, son came and visited me last weekend and uh i barely recognized him yeah no it was uh it was pretty cool anyway he uh he works uh at a uh at a bread uh a bakery i guess they do a lot of different products can i mention the name well hold on did you did you did make get, lots of? Did uh, I sign a contract with them? Yeah. Well, I was gonna say no. Did you make a lot of? Uh, you know, make it earning some dough ah, puns. Ah, and, ah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, it's uh, Zingerman's in uh, Ann Arbor, and they they're a wonderful company. I'm very glad he's uh, able to hook up with them. But he uh, he sends me this uh, picture yesterday. And he told me he was going to do this. I guess they have like extra bread or used bread or old yeah. bread or yeah, they can't. If they're a bread shop, they can't sell day old yeah, bread usually. Yeah, or... right. So uh, he said, uh, "Dad, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do something artistic with it." And he sent me a. It's a bread guy. His eyes were lit up, and he's he's made out of bread. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's really. And what did he? Oh, oh and his name is Ryan. You know, he named his bread person Ryan. Okay, uh, red rye bread. Oh, you, know? you got to take the bread person to the park and let him sit there and film him in time lapse as the birds. Oh my god, away. wouldn't that be great? <laughs> and anyway, I think that was the idea behind these things, where they were going to be kind of fun things that they could stick out in the ground mm -hmm. and watch the squirrels just go insane. You know? Yeah. Although then I could also picture later on. You know, people being attacked by squirrels, you know. <laughs> uh, so. How realistic are these things? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> well, the eyes did glow in the dark, so that was kind of cool, too. Anyway, um, cool. Or that'd be funny, so you, you give it, like, a bell, so when the squirrels start, but they bite too much, and the thing rings, and it scares them all away, and, and then they, they run, away, run away again, yeah. yeah. That's entertainment for Riley. Days. I'm sorry, That's what, that was the joke. I think his name was Riley. That's what it was. Uh -huh. Anyway, I loved it when I saw it. That is so, awesome. I just want to... Thanks for sharing with the rest of us. Yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> buy Zingerman's bread. Support a squirrel. Or don't buy Zingerman's bread. Support a lot of squirrels. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of kind of fun. Um, I'm glad my son is, you know, following after me and pursuing artistic... Uh, 
pursuits, so to speak. All right. So I kind of got what I wanted in the foreground here. I wanted to kind of go back and put a little more of the line work in for the building. And also I'm kind of wanted to check in. I just want to know how much, I, I, I know we're not near an hour. I'm just curious, excuse me, how much uh, time I've spent so far. Do you really want to know? Yeah. Really? Yeah. We're at the 45 minute mark. Are you kidding? Yep. Time flies when you're painting rock. And talking incessantly. Talking. We wish you would stop. Just play music. For, there, there for is, the love of God, play music. Play that Japanese music. <laughs> that sounded good. I would, but uh, YouTube's very strict on what uh, music they let you play in the background. Mr. Miyagi. Mm -hmm. Daniel san Oh, boy. Are they? Yes, they're yeah. You got to pick from a very select. Uh, Is it because they don't? They're afraid they're going to have to pay residuals or something like that. Betcha. Gotcha. Unless you're going to do a cover song, then so they let split me guess. the revenue. So if you so, want to sing the Japanese pop song, then we can keep it in. Oh. Okay. All right. You just don't get the full revenue sharing. I understand. I get it. So. What what are the four songs that you can play? Happy birthday. No. Oh God, no. No, never. Happy yeah. birthday. Well, I think that's actually public domain again. Finally, but that's what I was wondering. Did yeah. somebody else pick it up or what? No. Um, I think it just became an obscure. Like they couldn't defend it in lawsuits. Ah. You know, it's too in, in enveloped in pop culture or culture in general. I should say. I was uh, gonna say. How many of us have a claim to it, you know? Yeah. No, so... No, they've got a, a decent size uh, audio library, as long as you give credit to the artist. Hmm. Um, people don't understand how long it takes to find background music that jives with whatever you're doing. Right. I spend hours on the paintball stuff trying to find a... You know, a cool, hip song that I'm going to be allowed to use and... Showing you know, yeah, people hitting each other with paint. Hours of three-minute songs. So I saw, I don't know what I was watching yesterday, but somebody had blowguns for paintballs. Or at yeah. least that's how they were using them. Now, is that available? Yeah, they got all kinds of stuff. There's guys that come up with their slingshots and stuff. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. Well, um, Sunshine ain't going to hit you as hard as the paintball gun will. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's probably about half the velocity. Okay, because slingshots scare the hell out of me. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd go up against a team of guys with slingshots before I'd go up against the... Well, yeah. How many times are you going to load? <laughs> that too. It's like, hey, let's get our... Let's get our uh, uh, for, that's see that's the thing that's the work I want to make a air powered paintball shotgun. Oh my! Where we god. can load up like you know fifty rounds and just gonna blow a blast of paint. Oh out. my god! That that would be like a cannon. Yeah. Because I thought that'd be fun because they do the big scenario games out there where you know like next this Sunday coming up is the free for all. You only pay for the paint, the rental gear, and all that's free. Uh, Lone Wolf Paintball, Mount Clemens. Uh, plug, plug. Plug, plug, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's neat. So I was like, oh, it'd be kind of fun to, you know, set that up at like a far end of the field or in the middle or something where it's got enough in there to shoot once. If anybody can get up to it and use <laughs> it, you'd probably take out a bunch of guys because... Uh, <laughs> and parents and... Some cars in the park. Well, it'd be in the wooded area in the back. Yeah, no, I <laughs> oh my god, I think that would be kind of uh, exciting. Because like the the Mount Metamora field has uh, a machine gun that they bring out every now and then. That it's got two giant uh, cans that just load paint, and I mean this thing just fires until it runs out. And then usually they don't keep refilling it, but it's yeah, <laughs> imagine that gets expensive. Yeah. 
All right, how much was that? Six thousand four hundred and eighty-five dollars. But it, it's just pay. something that adds to the event a little bit, makes it interesting. You can pay. You like can pay said. at the door. We need exciting painting events. There we go. I think paintballs would be perfect for uh, for a nice plain air event. You know. There you go. And these are lovely, but hey, what? Get away! I was gonna say, I should, yeah, I want to see if I can. How well you could paint if I'm shooting you with a paint. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I like that blowgun thing because it didn't look. Uh, it looked messy, and yet, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, they come out with something all the time, trying to keep the uh, the sport exciting or keep people interested. Because what's the number one reason people? Won't go try it. It hurts if I get shot. Yeah. yeah. All right, well. So yeah. does getting tackled and having your head bounce off the ground, but that doesn't deter people. But you know, watercolor painting is very safe <laughs> and exciting. <laughs> and you keep going off the bottom of the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. I know you took your glasses off, but <laughs> the tape's still there. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, I hear you. Um... But you're right. That is why I'm doing it. Anyway. So, as you can see, like I said, I just put these dots, you know, especially in the corners. What I like to do is, uh, you know, like the corners between three or four rocks, I like to put that little, uh, just a kind of like a little triangle almost of color. And what that does is it just kind of gives it the feeling that you know, not everything all came together perfectly. Because, like I said, this, this is not the ancient uh, Egyptian pyramids. Where they did everything just so. This is old man McPherson's. That's Jacques just so, right? Jacques just It's an old shed, wooden sh or barn. Yeah, at one time it was... Uh, you got to paint stuff that we can name a little easier. You know, we have to keep asking what the hell do we call a thing. Yeah. It might be time to That's paint usually something because different. I, I, <laughs> it's usually because I forgot what we, we're yeah. calling it. Um, but, yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I want to also mention that uh, a lot of people have watched the uh, How to Paint Skies uh, video. Yep. And... Uh, we are going to be painting a lot more skies uh, because uh, a lot of people are interested. And what I like about skies is there's like a million different skies. You know, you can... There's... You would almost say every day the sky looks different. Exactly. And that's what's so amazing about it. The other thing is, you know, there's clouds that go by like this. And, and that's kind of what I did for the last video. How about clouds that are coming at you, you know? Getting that kind of angle where it's swoop, swooping up towards you. Um, that is also just a beautiful, um, uh, beautiful thing to put together. And I think skies, not only in my videos, uh, the comments that we've received so far, but in my classes over the years that I've taught over, over the years, skies are the number one, seriously, number one thing that people both want to do desperately and fear the most. So we're going to try to take a little of the fear out of it. Well, I think that the issue is you, uh, it's the sky's a, a blue sky, mm -hmm. right? Needs to stay kind of delicate, right? Yep. If you keep adding in, in your grass or like your trees in the background in this painting get to almost a really dark, just shy of a black green, yes. it's okay. Oh, it's shadow. It's in the distance. It's... If your sky turns into dark navy blue, uh, it might be a little bit of an issue. It might look well, a little out of place unless you're doing a dusk shot. Or a good storm. Or a good storm. And I and I, I, I love a good storm, you know? Yeah, we got so, lots of stuff coming. If you have anybody watching has any suggestions, as always, we encourage you to put them in the comments below so we can uh, go over them and... and, and do them at some point in the yes. future. Uh, you yeah. know, we were talking. Uh, we had a, a, a nice young lady rec ask if we did online classes, so we're looking into 
you know, small groups of six or seven people where we can do a chat hangout and do a painting class together that way once a week. Um, skies, like I said, are popular. Uh, I want to get you back into painting birds and turtles and stuff, uh, flowers, a whole variety of stuff. So Exactly. But a, a lot of people like landscapes, and you got to have a sky for every one of them. So yeah. I think um, we definitely have to go with this. Um, so that will be coming up in the in, uh, for sure in the near future. Um, and we're going to touch base, too, on uh, how to take not like say necessarily one photograph and turn it into your painting but how to take elements from a couple photographs yes. and turn it into a cohesive photo so nobody's like you just painted that Anstel Adams picture <laughs> no no we we liked his uh his foreground elements but I like this barn from over here and I like this over here and it's not a an accurate reproduction of any one photo but it's and it may not even be the same perspective. It's You're using it as reference. Oh, what does the wood look like? What's the stone look like? What did the grass look like? I've never been to the Grand Canyon, or I've never been to uh, Yosemite Park. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah, well, it is nice to... Look at the layers of the rocks on yeah, the side of the mountain. Exactly. That's another thing we're going to be playing with a, a, a little more in the future is... Um, as soon as I can get Keith to move back up to no. suburban land here. I'm not moving to suburbia. Kill me. I uh, I will visit suburbia. I just Monday can't. through Friday from yeah. 9 to 5. <laughs> I just don't want to be part of it. I am very happy where I'm at. For now. Mm. Anyway. That and my son just moved near me, so I'm not, uh, you know... Yeah, but with his track record, he's only going to be there for like a couple weeks. No, that's not true. What do you mean track record? No. <laughs> he's a he's dedicated... He's a setting young man. He's, he's a, around a lot. I know. He's a hard-working, on-the-go kind of person. That's good. I won't tell you what I was doing at his age. Yeah. I was thinking he was doing them too. But uh, you were working. And he's not little anymore. I know, bigger than both of us combined. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, I think the, he never would do art with me. He would never participate in art. He never would do anything artistic with me. And it just broke my heart, you know? And then uh, he's 18, he's ready to graduate, right? And I'm like, you got to tell me what the heck you're doing, you know? It, you know, can you... You know, give me a hint. Do you want to do... You know, you can't play video games for the rest of your life. Ah, that's... I, I don't think, <laughs> you know, but... Um, he, he looks at me and goes, I, I want to be a chef. And I'm like, what? You know, well, but that's so cool and, and very artistic, you know? And uh, and you wait till... What? Till you're leaving? Off to college kind of thing, you know? And uh, I'm just... Like I said, absolutely thrilled at what he's doing. Uh, between the baking, the pastries, chefing every once in a while. Um, I wish him well. And I wish he'd come over and cook for me more often. I thought that's what was funny, is all the meals I cooked for him. When he could have been cooking for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're not that good of a cook. Hey, hey, that's not oh, true. Oh, oh. He he learned everything from me. What? <laughs> right now, I'm hoping he's not going to see this video. All right. So, you see how I take the, the dark little lines that I just did? Mm -hmm. And I'm just pushing a little extra color in them kind of give give it the feeling of a little bit of shadow here and there a little different variations in color oh cool Ooh. I like it I'm gonna keep it Keith McGuire's giveaway 
What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep this one. Oh. Keith McGuire's giveaway. Darn not, it! Not <laughs> it's not fair. We'll do giveaways again. I said I liked that one. Mm. Too late. Mark announces. All right. So this side of the... It's not like the other side. That's the other thing. One side of this uh, rock wall is different than the other side. The entrance was probably something else at some other time. Fallen down or replaced or whatever. So... All right. How much longer? I don't know. How close do you want to get done? Or are you about done? Yeah, I am about done. I was All kidding. Right. I was teasing. Wah, wah, wah. We're close enough to being done. Yeah, we've hit an hour. We can wrap it up whenever you're ready. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I don't know how much it needs a little bit more it really does but it sure doesn't need a whole hour's worth all right so we'll do a live stream next week to wrap it up and then maybe we'll do a second live stream after of something else uh it just won't be an hour long it'll be maybe two half hour live streams i'm pretty sure that'll that'll be awesome because like I said, I, I truly do not believe that uh, I got that much more to go. But there is just enough that um, I kind of like having the opportunity to take a break and look at it. I don't usually just, you know, keep painting, keep painting. Uh, there are some things that need a little work. So I think uh, we've got quite a bit done today. Uh, like I said, we'll just wrap it up next time, and we're going to have some, we'll have a small, uh, maybe a quick cloud lesson uh, for the second half of next time. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, for uh, watching, and for all of you that uh, are watching later, uh, appreciate it. Um, anything else? So, as always... Keith said it already. Thank you for watching. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Ring the little notification bell so you know when we put out a new video. Uh, if you're interested in picking up any of the products that Keith is using in today's video or any of his videos, there's always a link in the description to take you to his website uh, where we have various lists of where to buy the sminky paints, the little Cornell brushes, the arches, cold press, watercolor paper, the butcher trays, and sometimes other things, depending. Uh, other as well things. as take a chance to look through Keith's website and his online store where he sells prints of some of his work. And we are hoping to push out many, many more prints in the upcoming days. So He, um, he locks me in the basement. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, Give it a like, a share, all that fun stuff again. And if I can get Keith to put the paintbrush down so I Fine. can trust that he's not going to do anything else to all the right, painting no. while you're not watching. All right, I'm done. We are out of here. Let's uh, switch to Keith's camera view. Wave. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Come on back.